Howdy once again, it's Tubal Cain, your YouTube shop teacher, and this time with episode 3 of my 3D printing with my Creality CR10. And again, I always thank uh, Banggood for making this machine available to me so that I can do these videos. And at the present time here, I am printing some gears, and I'll get back to that in just a few moments. At the moment I'm using this uh, PLA filament and that came from uh, Amazon and seems to be quite a good product at a reasonable price. But I've been taking the advice of many people that have contacted me and thank you for all of the advice. Some of it is conflicting advice but uh, much of it is very useful. But the problems that I encountered in uh, the very first video are pretty much overcome now and that was just uh, a learning curve and now that I know uh, how to uh, heat the bed and you know preheat everything and and what adjustments and settings to make with the slicer and I'm using Cura uh, I'm not really having any major problems anymore but one thing that really helped me is to print out on a raft it really seems to secure it to the bed so I'm appreciative of that Now, thanks to Myford Boy in England, Great Britain, uh, he turned me on to several improvements, and one is this indicator holder that clips right on the front, and most of you have probably seen this, but I'll put the Thingiverse uh, credit on the screen here in a minute. But that really helped me with leveling the bed. And then uh, also Myford Boy said, well, make yourself some of these uh, wheels under here for adjustment. So I printed out four of these also from Thingiverse and it just makes it so easy to to make the adjustment rather than that small knob. So th those were great improvements and I know there's a lot of other accessories that can be printed out as well and that Thingiver Thingiverse rather is really uh, an amazing sight. I'm not interested in their uh, various decorative items at all. I'm interested in, in machine things and things that really apply toward what I do in the machine shop. So you can expect to see more of that and I hope you watch those other videos. I have been using Tinkercad for some of the things I do, but I have not mastered, nor for that matter have I even tried to use Fusion 360, because I came into contact with a man by the name of Kevin Peterson, so he's been doing some of these jobs for me. If you remember from the last episode where I showed you those blue wheels, he did that. And then I had been working on indicator holders that can be held in the Aloris tool post, and he designed this and sent it to me so I could print it out. So thank you Kevin for that and that was shown in one of my other videos. And then in addition I used that as a model and made one out of aluminum. But really the plastic ones are all that is needed. There isn't a great deal of rigidity or ruggedness involved in holding an indicator because these certainly are sturdy enough but that is going to be debatable I think by some people but uh, so, so thank you for that help, and I uh, hope that Kevin can help me with a few other projects that are coming up regarding foundry patterns. For several weeks now, my focus has been to print gears for the change gears on my Atlas lathe. And I've had a great deal of interest in this, and if you watch tips number 416, you'll see uh, details on that. But here's one that's being printed right this minute, and here's one that I stopped halfway through that has a 20% fill. The ones that I actually used on the lathe in that video are solid, like this one. Now there's a person, and I'll put that on uh, the screen also, in Thingiverse that designed all of these, so I've taken the, uh, the files right off of Thingiverse and it works great except for the smaller ones. Those are the ones I came up with myself. But I was surprised at how durable these are on the lathe, although 
they haven't stood the test of time yet, but they will. Some say that I need to print them out of, uh, not ABS, they said that, that's too soft, but out of nylon. They are worried that the oil will deteriorate the PLA. And I really don't know, we'll just have to wait and see. But these just printed so perfectly accurate, the bore and the keyways and the teeth. So that really turned out great and I think I sparked the interest of many people because on some of these older metalworking machines that I work on, you can no longer find repair parts and I think printing them out will be just uh, the final solution. A slow process, yes it is, and it takes about nine hours to print this out. But I usually put it on, uh, start it up just before bedtime, then it's done when I get up in the morning. Also, uh, people have told me that it isn't necessary to have 100% uh, fill on these, that I can get by with 20% as long as I have plenty of layers on the outside where the teeth are because I, I could not get away with hollow teeth as you see here. The teeth would uh, shear off and I do break some of these in that video I talked about a minute ago. Tips uh, 416. Have a gander at that if you will. Well that about concludes what I wanted to say about this Banggood printer today. And again thanks to Banggood and uh, I'll talk to you again about in a month or so when I've made some more progress or learned a little bit more and I've come a long way and now what I've learned seems pretty obvious so alright this is Tubal Kane saying so long for now and I'll see you in my next video